Hello and welcome to another edition of the Avid Screencast. My name is Christian Förster and this week we'll continue our look into uh, Avid's pan and zoom effects. Or actually we did use the Avid pan and zoom already. So check out the last episode if you didn't watch that. This week we'll do pretty much the same thing with uh, Boris pan and zoom. Again, we have our nice photo and that's still our Avid pan and zoom with the great weird spline thingy at the beginning and the end. So let's get rid of that and use the, the Boris Continuum Complete Pen and Zoom effect. For that, go to Tools, Effect Palette, Boris Continuum Complete Distortion and Perspective, and drag and drop the BCC Pen and Zoom effect onto your video track. So let's go into Effect Editor, and the first thing you'll see is, oh, well, how do I import the image? Open the source setting and say source external file. I'll click on external file. Again, uh, choose the photo that you want to zoom into. And ta-da, there it is. So we can toggle the source closed and check out our animation settings. As you can see here, there are different workflows. Now here you choose the level of automation that uh, the effect is supposed to do for you. Auto animation has the nice effect that you don't actually need any keyframes. It's for a simple, you know, one zoom or one pan animation. And uh, you don't need any keyframes. It starts at the beginning, it ends at the end. You can set how many frames it's supposed to uh, be still at the beginning and the end, and it does the rest for you, which is great. A B completion is kind of half automated where you set the beginning and the end, but the level of completion you can keyframe. And the other two is a completely uh, manual where you can animate multiple zooms and pans and everything is, you know, done by hand. And we'll do that later on. But, you know, first, let's do the simple thing and do a an simple A-B auto animation. It works incredibly well and it's absolutely easy. The first thing you'll have to do is enter preview mode. And if you do enter preview mode, you have another option to preview the setup A, preview the setup B, and preview the mix. Setup A is basically the beginning of the shot. Setup B is the end of the shot. And as you can see in the composer window, there are your controls to change everything around. And there's also a preview window where you can see what it will actually do. So first let's do the same animation that we did in our last episode. We'll start with his face only. And you can see how easy it is to manipulate this. By the way, you can also rotate. It's it's incredibly easy to use with uh, this, you know, with these controls on screen. It's just it's just great, <laughs> you know, the ease of use is really awesome. So let's say this is our start. Let's go to setup B, which is our Last frame, zoom this out to basically full screen, something like this. So let's get out of preview mode. And there are a couple of more options that you can take. First one is the interpolation option, which is pretty much the same as the spline option in Avid's pan and zoom effect. So this is uh, the path that it will take, either a straight path or a spline path. Then you can manipulate how soon you want the uh, animation to start. The slider goes from five to a hundred, so it's it's kind of a percentage of uh, the duration that you have chosen for your animation. So let's go to fifteen and four seconds in the end of still. So let's go to twenty. And now it will start at roughly three seconds, I guess. There we go. It starts and animates out. 
and you can set the ease curve which you can also preview and you can change the way it eases in and out of the start and the end of your animation which is you know great and nice visual feedback as well but you know you can generally stick with the default here which is pretty good the way it is now all you'd have to do is render the thing so as with all Boris effect this takes pretty long to render but now we can watch it and it's a pretty nice and fluid animation and it's you know as you've seen it's incredibly easy to create a simple animation like that. But of course, this only works if you have, you know, a starting point and an end point, and that's the end of that. If we, again, want to start with uh, the camera, get to his face, and then zoom out, you'll have to do a manual animation. So let's go with a workflow of Transform A. Doesn't actually matter if you use Transform A or Transform B or anything. <laughs> and we'll set a couple of keyframes. The first two keyframes for the start, then in the middle, there we want to be on his face, and again at the end, we'll want to be zoomed out. The face part is already pretty much done. You can again go to preview mode and change it a little if we want to. Then go, the, go to the first two keyframes. You can see it's not that hard either. <laughs> to do this, right? And get to the camera. And then to the last two keyframes and zoom this thing out. And there we have basically our simple animation that is done with the defaults, of course. And as you may have noticed, there are no animation settings anymore. All you have now is the transforms because basically all you do is transform that little rectangle of uh, your you know, screen and you're animating this. So what about path settings or easing in or easing out of uh, animations? How do you do that? Well, you do that by simply showing the keyframes and then toggling the respective keyframe parameters on or off. In this case, we can toggle the position parameters as well. And uh, if you toggle the key keyframes on or off, you can see there you have all options to change these settings, to ease them in, ease them out, to use Bezier curves. As you can see, by default, we're using uh, spline which actually does all the easing in and easing out that you generally need for you. So you don't actually have to do a lot of keyframe manipulation uh, if you don't want any specific results. If you do, you can of course change uh, the keyframes to Bezier curves and manipulate them to your liking. You can do the same thing for the X point, for the Y point, and for the scale and rotation, of course, as well, which is, you know, basically everything you can do. So again, if you're not in desperate need for a Bezier curve, animating the pan and zoom uh, manually is easy as pie. All right, so we've rendered the thing and now let's watch it. That is a pretty good result for what we've quickly done. Again, if you wanted to have an absolutely smooth animation here through his face, you would have to do that with the Bezier curves. But you can work that out on your own, I'm sure. Um, the only drawback uh, about the pan and zoom uh, by Boris is that it takes longer to render, significantly longer to render. But, uh, you know, Evit's pan and zoom is not a very quick render either. So, you know, if you have the time use the, B the BCC pen and zoom. It's actually very, very nice. All right, uh, now this is everything about pen and zoom that you'd ever wanted to know or even didn't. Um, and if you have any more questions or anything, just drop me a line at mail at evitscreencast.com and I will answer, trust me. I may not know the answer, but I will answer. <laughs> 
thank you for watching this episode of the Avid Screencast. If you like, go ahead and subscribe to the podcast at avidscreencast.com. We can also watch past episodes and click the subscribe and iTunes link if you like. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter, twitter.com slash avidscreencast, and on Facebook, facebook.com slash avidscreencast. And if you want to see what I do professionally, check out editguy.de. Once again, thanks for watching. See you next week. Goodbye.